What's going on you guys? It's Perry the Entertainer back again for another video. In this video we're going to be reviewing everything that happened last night on Monday Night Raw that took place on June 30th, 2014. But before we begin, I would like to throw it over to a good friend of mine. He's a good spe he's our special guest of the night. He's going to help me review what happened. Introduce yourself. What's going on guys? This is the Wrestling Joan in here with Perry the Entertainer. We are reviewing Monday Night Raw as of June. 2014. You can follow me on at TWJ Entertainment or ENT, that's what it says. And we can go ahead and get this thing started. All right. It's a lot smoother than our last take, so we did a damn good job. Yeah, this a, time. Lot, a lot better. All right. So we kicked things off with Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. We had the authority come down and they introduced us to the 15 time WWE World Heavyweight Champion, John Cena. And then we eventually all came to the realization that John Cena, his face plastered on the WWE 2K15 video game cover. What did you think about that? Um, to be honest with you, I wasn't too happy about it. Because... You, neither I was the rest of the IWC. C Go ahead, I'm sorry. I just don't think Cena's earned the right to be on another video game cover. This isn't... This is the... I think the fifth-ish? Sixth, maybe? Video game cover that he's been on, and uh, it's been two two or three years since we've last seen Cena on a video game cover. Uh, last time I've seen him on a video game cover was SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. This was back when THQ was creating their video games, and that was a, that was a pretty good long time ago. But I just don't think that Cena's earned it because just just because he has a pretty face and he's still the top superstar in the wrestling business. Uh, they just put him on the cover, just like last year they put The Rock because he was the top superstar of that time. So you're saying that Cena doesn't deserve to be on the cover? No, not at all. I don't deserve. I don't think he deserves it. He's not he's solely because... on it though too. That's why. That's the reason yeah. I have a problem with it. There's yeah. nobody else. Just... There's nobody else on the cover with him. I mean, it's just him. Yeah, just him. Just like The Rock last year, nobody was on about him. Uh, I guess that's a, I guess that's how 2K does it because like on their NBA games they put lot, lot, uh, this year they put LeBron James on it and that was all there was on there was LeBron James. Well, that's that, because that's LeBron James do, is the I face guess. of basketball right now. Yeah, just like Cena, he's apparently the face of the WWE as of right now. True, very true. But I just don't think he deserves to be the face. I don't deserve he does. I don't think he deserves to be on the cover of the video game. Not none of that stuff. I mean. He's a great entertainer, but he's not a wrestler. Very true. And I remember Daniel Bryan even, you know, solidifying that point in a in exactly. you know, the build up to their SummerSlam match. But uh about yeah. this promo, I don't know what it was, but I was actually in it with Cena. I actually liked this promo up until the very end when he started making fun of Stephanie with the, you know, the throwing her into the pudding and well According to them, it was crap, but we all know it was like caramel pudding or something like that. Yeah, it was pudding, yeah. I didn't have much of a problem with it until then because Cena put the funny, the jokes, he put them backstage again, and I love that type of Cena, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Cena, whenever, like you said earlier, whenever he gets serious, he can cut drop dead amazing promos, but mm -hmm. once, once he likes up in the front like in the middle of the segment like when he starts joking around that's when it all goes to crap that's whenever he ruins it for everybody take the take you know the take the feud that he had with bray wyatt for an example i remember there was a role i don't remember how long ago it was but remember when he was making fun of him on the titan tron with the baby and making fun of the beards and everything all three of them yeah that's what killed that feud for me and it was leading, you, and it was leading up into their payback match, and I don't know why they would even consider doing that. Maybe it's like I understand when you would need jokes to kind of lay off of a a huge storyline, especially one that has so much drama, like the Cena and Wyatt one did, you know? Yeah. But yeah, Cena, I don't think uh, I don't think you should have made the joke at you know Bray Wyatt's expense because of his character at the time, you know. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, man. Uh, yeah, I know where you're going with the, where you're going with this, and like in the Cena and Bray Wyatt feud, uh, 
the probably the, my favorite moment of that time was when Bray Wyatt and the lights were off and the spotlight was on Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, and Bray Wyatt. Bray, Bray Wyatt was on his knees and the two other guys were on his side. Then John Cena comes up from behind him wearing a sheet mask and a plaid shirt, I think, mm-hmm. and Cena beat, no, beat him up. Wearing, that's the scene. That's the scene that we need to see. That's the kind of scene that we need to see. I liked, I liked yeah. that. I think that was probably the strongest promo they had going into the WrestleMania match. Yeah, that was the scene that we need to see more often. Not this soldier wannabe rapper that's never made it type of guy that enjoy that wants the kids to enjoy him, but not the not the adults. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, we ended up getting the news that John Cena will be defending his WWE World Heavyweight Championship in a fatal four way match against Randy Orton, The Demon Kane, and Roman Reigns. And eventually, that was going to be our main event. John Cena was going to team with Roman Reigns to face Kane and Randy Orton in a tag team match. Yeah. Uh, any closing thoughts before we uh, move on to the next topic? Oh, uh, well, no, not at all. Uh, we can go ahead and move on. I mean, see, the the announcement was kind of shocking to me. I didn't think Cena would defend it in a fatal four-way at Battleground. But I thought he would defend it probably just against Roman Reigns since... Randy Orton already had his shot last night. That was that was practically his rematch, I think. And I don't even know how Kane is in this, just because he's in the authority uh, picture. I guess he had to put him in it just to help Orton out. But I'd rather see him rather face Roman Reigns battleground one on one or one on one with Randy Orton, even though Randy Orton lost his opportunity. But yeah, we can go ahead and move on. I think WWE really did need to sell battleground because I think they completely forgot about that. On the way moving into SummerSlam, they figured, oh, we have another pay-per-view that we need to fill. So let's yeah. throw some random match on the card. Let's try and make Cena look so strong so that when Brock Lesnar does come back, Brock actually kind of has a shot against Cena, you know? Yeah, but you're going to have to you're gonna have to know that they're going to make Cena look strong building up to the feud that he's supposed to have with Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So we all know Cena's going to defend the title. We all know he's probably going to win it. And then Brock Lesnar is probably going to decimate him and take it from him. I wouldn't mind seeing that either because I think that's the best thing that Brock Lesnar can do at this point. We have right. a little uh, visitor. Well, like, I, like as I was saying, uh, I, I wouldn't mind uh, Brock Lesnar beating Cena for the title, but the thing that bothers me the most is that he's a part-timer, and I cannot stand part-timers. I don't like them. You're not a fan of having part-timers be champions? Not at all. Not at all. So not even when The Rock. I mean, I didn't. I had. I. I hated The Rock beating CM Punk. I hated. Exactly. That. I. I hated that. CM Punk does so much better. I would rather see John Cena beat CM Punk for the title than The Rock. Okay, that's understandable. Exactly. Just because you you know that Cena is going to be able to be there every night. You know? Exactly. Just like Punk. Just like Punk before he left, he he was there every night. Then he put on one hell of a show. Love him or hate him, you have to respect them. Well, uh, as much as we'd like to talk about John Cena, we got to move on to our uh, next. Topic. All right, let's go ahead, man. What What do you want to talk about? What, what talk do you want to talk? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? You're you're the you're the guest here. It's up to you. Uh, man, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, I I got a good one. Uh, Rusev and Jack Swagger. Oh, Jack Swagger confronting. Rusev on this episode of Monday Night Raw. It looks like Swagger's going to be going down the uh, the good side of the road this time. Exactly. That's that's actually pretty good for for uh, him. I mean, look, he has been he, he has been a face ever since he started, and uh, it'd be nice to see Swagger try something new, uh, becoming face facing Rusev, possibly beating him too. But uh, I could see him doing something some type of thing like the Miz where. He turns face for a good couple, good few months, maybe a year, and then turning heel again, and like a uh, turning, slowly processing. Tur- uh, how how can I put this? A slow process heel turn. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. A slow process heel turn. You know how I mean? big of a how big of a heel are we talking? Do you think he's going to be a bigger heel than he than he was? Um, uh, I can see like like the Miz. Uh, he he he. Ever since he lost the Intercontinental Championship, I think I think uh, he's been going down a slow heel side of the roster, and I mean Jack Swart could possibly do that too. Um, he could possibly be like a Miz type of heel, where he gets beat up by movie stars and uh, beat up by a returning superstar as well. You know I think I mean? when it, 
I think when it comes to the Jack Swagger topic, I think all we can say at this point is it's about damn time. I think, yes. honestly, WWE, especially after they broke up the Real Americans after WrestleMania, when they yeah, broke them up, that... Swagger was going absolutely nowhere. Yeah, He was I'm going from jobbing to, jobbing to Adam Rose to jobbing to all sorts of different guys. And now he's back as a good guy. You know, we got the, the we the people thing. That's the funniest part of it all. Even when Jack Swagger was jobbing the guys like Adam Rose, the we the people chant was still strong. It was still huge. Yeah, the problem the problem here is even if uh yeah, hold on. Yeah. And especially with you know the the World Cup coming up, you know, the we're playing in the World Cup tomorrow against Belgium. I think this is the perfect time to kind of you know, establish that American figure. Not like Biggie Langston, but I think that this definitely is the um it's definitely the character that could Elevate Jack Swagger into possible main event status. I know that that's probably not the case because of what he's done to guys like Ziggler and guys like Barrett. But I think that this yeah. turn was definitely needed to keep Swagger relevant, and I think it. Yeah. Def- I think it's definitely gonna well work out for WWE in the long run because especially with merchandise sales and everything being the the biggest pivot when it comes to building stars and everything. The Swagger merchandise is still selling. No matter what anybody says, the Swagger merchandise is still selling. Yeah, man, I understand that. And, uh, like, I guess because – all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little spoiler here for you guys. For you, you who don't know, Vince McMahon has officially buried Adam Rose and Paige. And I guess the fact that he has buried Adam Rose and I guess they wanted to find something else for Jack Swagger to do because I think – I think they were going to continue the Adam Rose, uh, Jack Swagger feud for a couple more weeks, but I guess not since he since Adam Rose is buried now. Uh, but yeah, I guess I guess they're trying to find something else for Swagger, something possibly bigger. Maybe after he gets done with Rusev, maybe he can get a little title push, maybe for the U.S. title because that fit him. That fit perfectly with his We the People persona. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I I completely understand that, and I think that would yeah. be. I think that'd be. <laughs> I don't want to give him a mid card title if he doesn't need it. Because he's got the crowd behind him. He's yeah, got, but like he's got the 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 mic piece, if you want to say that. He's got the mouthpiece and Zeb Coulter. Yeah, he needs but, that merchandise sale. And I know I was saying that how you know his merchandise is still selling, but maybe now that you know they are having this U.S. versus Russia and Jack Swagger being looked at as kind of like the Rocky Balboa of the thing, Rocky versus Drago. Yeah. I think that this can definitely work out in WWE's favor. I think it can sell a lot more Jack Swagger merchandise, and it could actually make Swagger into a bigger star despite him possibly jobbing the Rusev at SummerSlam or something like that. Well, yeah, man. Um, I mean, we already saw Big E practically job to him. Uh, at their matchup back, Big E nothing going for him. He got, hit, he got his butt torn up by Rusev. He did nothing there. But last night at Money in the Bank, he, sh- he put up one hell of a fight. There was a lot of moments in that match where people were like, oh my god, and stuff like that. The Bruce had the job done, and we just have to see if Jack Swagger can. I think it was I think it was definitely a good moment. I think uh, that definitely just oh, yeah, added definitely. on to the atmosphere that this Raw actually created. Uh, what What's next? What's next on the chopping block here? Oh, man. Uh, I already have my turn. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I think we got to talk about the champion or the the former WWE champions coming back. They've been hyping it up all night oh, on yeah, Twitter, there we go. and it turned yeah. out to be none huh. other than the Miz. The Miz oh, came yeah. back, Miz. and and don't forget and and not just any Mr. Miz, Watson not just not like the Jerry Springer Miz. No, I'm talking about movie star Miz, the best Miz. Oh. That's right, he's back. And- and he came out, and he was tearing yeah, up the crowd, have... and and all this sort of garbage. And then he he walked out like a god under his own power. Oh yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Nobody interrupted him. Nobody interrupted him. I got, I got better. I got something better for you than this. You ready to hear it? What? I have a that happened. Uh of the radio podcast show Talk Is Joke. You know who that is? Why did you? 
Fitzgerald came back. And he tore the house down, too, when he <laughs> gave Mr. Smug the Miss himself a nice little code breaker to the face. And You had to ruin my mood, didn't you? <laughs> you, you had to ruin uh, it. <laughs> no. I made things better. This is my show, man. You, you're tearing the house down. You're tearing my show out. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, I guess I, I guess I'd say I'm hijacking it a little bit. <laughs> no, but, but we yeah. had both Miz and Chris Jericho come back in a pretty damn good segment. They both kind of, uh, well, no, Jericho really didn't say anything to Miz. Miz kind of talked, and then, like you said, Jericho ate him with a code breaker. I don't know a what the hell the point was having that... Miz coming back like that. Maybe to make him relevant, well, saying that he's back. Maybe well, listen, he's coming back uh, for a mid card title they, or something. They did that. They they put the Miz on there because you you know the they knew the people were expecting a guy like Chris Jericho or Brock Lesnar or something like that. Instead, they put out a guy that really no one actually cared about was the Miz, and people were like, "What the heck? I just I wasted my whole night trying to figure out who was coming back." And then. They, sh- they shocked the world when they brought Chris Jericho back, the guy that everybody was expecting to return. And it... Now, see, I think that they should have done it at Money in the Bank. I think it would have been a lot more... Yeah, exactly. You know, surprising. And, uh, yeah, but I, I think they kind of kind of wasted a good return of Chris Jericho. All right, guys, ready for this? They brought the White... The White family came out and mm-hmm. put out an onslaught on Chris Jericho. They attacked him. Uh, Wyatt family really set bad. their sights on Jericho. Chris, they put the target they, on the back. Yeah, and they gave uh, uh, Ray White gave Jericho a sister Abigail, and that was the end of that. Uh, I guess they had their sights on. I'd I'd like to Chris start Jericho. the con- I'd like to start the conversation about this. Yeah, man. This has um, potential gonna... to be feud of the year. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, two great mic workers, two great in-ring performers. This is probably one of the best feuds of the year. Probably mm-hmm. one of the best in WWE history because you, you all admit this is probably bigger than the Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt feud. But the Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt feud ended in a very good singles match at the Rumble. Yeah, but like... This could this could probably be a lot more bigger than what uh, Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan did. I mean, how many see, um, how many people can say that they've main evented a Raw or a pay per view or been the headline of some sort of a pay per view with Daniel Bryan, John Cena, and Chris Jericho all in the same year? Nobody else can say yeah. that. One oh of yeah, the, definitely. Two that, of the best in ring performers, the face of the company. You can't get any better other than having, you know, the obvious one, having Undertaker come back and feud with them. Yeah. I mean, like, like last year, WWE had, WWE had a really bad, like, setback whenever Daniel Bryan lost the title, said their ratings started to go bad. But now, ever since probably, uh, maybe, maybe this year's Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, maybe, uh, things started to lift up a little bit. Now things are actually going a lot better for the WWE. I mean... Like they're they're gonna start a potential Chris Jericho and Bray Wyatt feud, one of the two best entering performers and mic workers there is today right now, and that's probably something the fans will actually weren't expecting, but they want to see at the same time. It's definitely going to end up building Bray Wyatt doing something that John Cena couldn't do because John Cena wouldn't do it because John Cena wouldn't put Bray Wyatt over at Mania or at Payback. Which disappointed me in the biggest way. Because well, you being got, you got, because being in the arena to see John Cena, and yes, I was. I was at Payback. Oh, you I, were too? I, I didn't know if I told you about that or not. Maybe I did. Maybe I don't. I don't think Mike ever told you about that. Man, uh, I hate to tell you this, but I was there too. I guess you and I didn't see each other. Uh, I guess I guess not, dude. We should have we should have met up or something. You should have let me know. But well, if being, I would have known you were there. But being in the arena to see John Cena win against Bray Wyatt in the way that he did with putting that big box-looking thing on top of Bray Wyatt, practically burying him under this big hunk of matter, it was it did nothing but just kind of take a little dump on the legacy of Bray Wyatt that's going on right now. Because you can't have a feud with anybody else, especially when you're in a feud with 
the face of the company. You yeah. can't you can't improve other than winning yeah. the world title. And I even I've even said I've gone on the record record saying that Bray Wyatt actually may be bigger than the world title itself. Oh, definitely, dude. He he's like you said, he has the whole world in his hands. And uh, but I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with everybody. You guys have to know what John Cena is. He is the top barrier of WWE. He's buried the likes of The Miz, of course. He's buried the likes of uh, Alex Riley. He, he's Alex Riley was probably the biggest burial John Cena has ever ha- John Cena has ever had. And uh, Bad News Barrett, uh, completely buried. He uh, by John Cena. Uh, guys like that. I mean, Cena. I'm actually surprised that Bray Wyatt was not buried by the guy. I mean, I actually thought that Bray it was it was over for Bray Wyatt after payback. I think this I think Jericho is the perfect guy that can put Bray Wyatt over, that can make Bray Wyatt a superstar, that can make Bray Wyatt that top talent that WWE needs in the heels. Especially yeah. now. Oh yeah, definitely. I agree. And I don't know what the hell was the point of having Miz come back. Maybe it you know, maybe it was to just troll people. Maybe he actually is back. Maybe they're actually f- serious on Miz, which I hope to God they are. I'm sick of seeing, you know, face Miz freaking be on my television screen promoting all sorts of crap, like all sorts of children's crap. I didn't like it, so I'm kind of glad that he's back in this heel mindset. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the last time I was actually a legitimate fan of The Miz was back whenever he teamed with John Morrison. That was, he was actually legit back then. Them, but now uh, I don't see nothing for him. I mean, you might, but I don't. That was a while ago. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a while ago. But uh, let's see, what else? Man, happened? I remember oh. the rumors. Uh, the sad, the sad thing is, there was actually rumors about John Morrison returning at Money in the Bank, and sadly, they weren't true. Oh wow! I didn't, I didn't think yeah. I knew about that. Yeah, man, that that's sad. I mean, I was looking forward to that. I thought he was actually gonna come back maybe, maybe he could have came back as the replacement of Miz tonight and maybe something else would happen i don't know we can go do some uh quick takes of what else happened in the night we all we had uh the intercontinental right. championship being vacated bad news barrett's yeah. injury is too severe so he is forced to um Separate relinquish shoulder. the title and cesaro basically went off on uh kofi kingston we had um the next chapter in the breakup of the funkadactyls where they practically just beat down on Nikki Bella. Cameron, you know, thinking she was fucking hot shit. I guess, you know, got jealous yeah. of Naomi getting the win. I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand what Cameron's mindset is at this point. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I was not a big fan of Cameron. I mean, she's hot as hell, but she is not the best of an in-ring performer as Naomi is. Naomi is spot-on amazing in the ring. Can pop, she she is definitely the champion. She didn't show it against Paige last night, but speaking of Paige, we have to talk about this, and I don't want to. So I'm going to give you the floor. Uh-oh. I want to. <laughs> I'm going to give you the floor. Okay, guys, you ready for this? You, this so is your Paige, moment. This is your moment. Go ahead. All right, I'm, I'll be happy to roll this in your face. Oh, go ahead, because I'm sure multiple people are, so uh, you're not going to be the first. <laughs> All right, well... We this had is your the, moment. The WWE Divas uh, saying stuff like people didn't believe in me that I should go back to NXT. And then she said that she's not going. And then the unthinkable happened. The WWE people who reached to see Punk, a.k.a. Phil Brooks, that, where he goes, he, she came and she challenged Paige to a WWE Divas t- Championship rematch he rightfully deserves from the night after WrestleMania. Uh, Paige... Surprisingly, I didn't know this would happen. Refused the title uh, match between those two, and uh, I'm guessing this was a potential fi- uh, heel turn for Paige and a uh, face turn for AJ Lee. And I'm actually happy about this because I like to see AJ Lee. She's a great in ring performer, just like Paige is. Both good mic workers. AJ Lee can work as a heel or face, and I'll still love her to that. Um, but AJ Lee. Surprisingly, set it up to the fans to determine whether or not Paige defends the title or not, and they decide. They, they of course, they chant it yes, and Paige accepted. They don't and, know any better. Uh, 
because they don't know any better. Yeah, right. I think you do best for that one. And uh, AJ Lee faced Paige for the championship. Uh, a good two-minute match, I guess. I guess that's how long it was. And pay, I met AJ Lee beat Paige for the Divas Championship by a roll-up, and I was happy about that. And uh, I'll be honest with you, Paige, uh, Paige didn't earn the Divas Championship, in my opinion. Um, on the first night of the job, I don't think she earned that. She got lucky, and I'm happy that the title is back home where it belongs in AJ Lee's arms. You, you, you don't want me to talk about this. You don't want me to. Oh, I'll go ahead. Say what you want to say. Say what you want to say. You don't want me to. I guarantee go ahead. you don't want me to. Why is my phone going off? You're letting, you're, you're letting me say what's on my Let me say what's on yours. It's your show. Go ahead, man. <laughs> I love the creative direction that WWE is going. Oh, how's that? The night after WrestleMania. Let's take the title off of AJ Lee. Put it on page. Not to mention, let's make it look like a burial. Let's basically throw AJ's longest Divas Championship reign ever. Let's throw it in the garbage so that she can go marry the guy that walked out on you. But it's okay. Because the same girl's going to be champion. She hasn't beaten a legit challenger. But she's still going to be champion when you come back. And when you come back, you're going to get your title back. Yep. You're you're rewarding her. You're rewarding her for marrying well, a guy that walked out. That's not exactly true. They're not rewarding her. They're not rewarding. I can't even say it right. Rewarding her for marrying the guy. She actually, while she was had, she, while she had the title in her hands, she asked for time off to uh, go marry CM Punk or or Phil Brooks, whatever. To marry him, and she'd come back and keep the title, uh, take the title back, and that's what, exactly what they did. They weren't congratulating her, because I don't think. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you, Zach. They're not going to reward her for marrying the walkout of the century. They're not gonna reward her for that. But uh, I guess they just wanted. They, she just wanted to have them all, but they were planning on giving her the title back. In my view, this was the wrong move. No, nah, not at this all. This was the wrong. Wrong move. First, Paige didn't deserve the title in the first place. Paige didn't deserve I mean, the title. No, she. I mean, she deserved the NXT Championship, but not NXT Divas Women's Championship, but not not the WWE Divas Championship. She had one match and she won the title. She ne- She didn't work her way up to it. None. None of that. There's there's divas like there's divas like Nikki Bella. There's divas like um who is who is who's who else is there. Naomi. Exactly. There's, there there's, is like, else there. there's divas like Natalia that deserve a shot more than Paige did. So but it said and said they bring a diva up from NXT, a rookie, on the first night of the job to beat Pete to beat pa- uh, AJ Lee for the Diva Championship a and rookie. only keep it for and only keep it for ninety days. A rookie. Yes, you're a, gonna a go rookie. blasphemous. And a rookie. Yes, she is a rookie. She's been wrestling her whole life. So has AJ. So does that make AJ a rookie? No. But AJ's been in WWE longer. She has more experience. That's what they Paige. mean by rookie. You haven't been in the, in the main streams longer. But listen, listen. I'm, I'm talking about NXT rookie. She was an NXT rookie. That's what I meant. And AJ Lee has been in the WWE main roster for a long time now. She, she worked her way up to it. First night, Paige is on the main roster. She wins the title. AJ Lee was on the main roster for what two or three years, and she didn't get crap for it until last year. And she now was, she get she gets she gets it back from the the devastating moment where Paige won the title. She was she in got event it stuff with Daniel Bryan. Yeah, but where'd that later? She, she cost Daniel Bryan the world championship, and they had nothing to do with her, so they decided to put her up with more superstars like got the CM Punk, John Cena, uh, Dolph Ziggler, guys like that, and. They finally found out that they can do something with her by betraying her best friend, former WWE Divas, uh, former WWE Diva and Divas Champion, Caitlyn. Beat her for the title, keep, make her into the female CM Punk, because she has the probably the best mic skills in, in the Divas division right now. Keep her uh, 
keep the title on her for as long as they can. She asked time off, and they gave the t- they gave the title to Paige while she was off, and that's it. And uh, they gave it back to her because they want. I think they're planning on putting. I'm pu- I think they're putting AJ Lee in the direction where CM Punk wins, where she keeps the title for longer, more than a year, and uh, lose it to. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they can bring Lita back and uh, beat her for it. That'd be a pretty good moment, in my opinion. I, I think I don't think Lita's coming back anytime soon. I think the only Whoa. way that AJ can lose the belt is to Paige, and I kind of like. I kind of do like. I got to admit, I do like how they did the uh, the double turn tonight. AJ to a face, Caitlin or Paige to a heel. And yeah, I think dude, this opens listen. up a little bit more opportunities for Paige because, well, let's face it, who really credible has Paige beaten for that title? She's beaten Tamina, who hasn't been over in three years. And she beat exactly Naomi. Naomi, who that's it. Let's face it, she's not the best in the world because we all saw the match. It was sloppier than hell at Money in the Bank. And well, yeah, but that. dude, listen, listen, but well, listen here. All right, you counted the guy, the people that Paige has defended against. Count as who else has AJ defended against? AJ. AJ hasn't defended against anybody else. She's defended it against... Uh, I think there's another one, right? Uh, who who did you say? I said Cameron, Naomi, Natalia, and... Uh, uh, Caitlin. So that's that's four. I, I know she's defended it against more people. Brie Bella. Um, the Bell, basically all the total defended it against Brie and Nikki Bell. Yeah, she defended against Brynn Bell. Basically, all the total Marie, Even Marie. Even Marie. Uh, not a champion, so Angelie defended it again in that fatal four way. Basically, all uh, the total divas. And I think that's it. Seven people. The only total diva. Well, let me correct myself. The only original total diva that she has not defended against was Josanne Offerman, a.k.a. JoJo. And that was that. She beat the total divas. Uh, Big whoop. There isn't no total divas anymore. Well, yeah, but uh, Bree's gone. Nikki's a jobber. Natalia isn't something. on television anymore. The Funkadactyls are breaking up. Summer Rae's having some stupid love triangle with Fandango. And hell, yeah. Rosa Mendez isn't even on TV, and apparently she's going to be on the next season. Wait, who is Rosa Mendez? Oh my God, no! I didn't. Know that. But anyways, uh, I guess I know what. I guess you forgot about JoJo because she's down in NXT now, and they're playing. She's she's working at the performance center with the likes of Solomon Crow, Prince David, and guys like that. And uh, they're planning on develop, developing her more into a diva because she, she's too young to be in, on the main roster right now. She's only uh, 19, I think. And uh, just like Paige, they kept her down in NXT for like two or three years, and. Um, they pro- finally brought her up. I think that's what they're going to do with JoJo. They're gonna train her a little bit, put her on NXT as wrestler, then bring her up to the main roster, back to the main roster with a uh, couple of the Total Divas again. All right, all right. Well, uh... and you got to – one more thing. JoJo, uh, real, she's really amazing in the ring. If if you didn't watch Survivor Series last year, she was in that uh, Divas elimination match. She she eliminated. I think she eliminated Tamina. Really. That's amazing too. It must be, especially when Tamina has been that, over that, in that, three that, years. That's telling you something. If if JoJo can actually eliminate me when she has experience at all in wrestling, that's telling you something right there. Well, we got to move on to the uh, last part of the night, the tag team match that you're going to have to kind of help me through because I lost power twice during the match. All right. You don't have to go through every uh, little thing; just kind of like the important stuff. How good was the match? Yeah, highlight it, like kind of highlight it. Um, all right, so the tag team match that was announced at the beginning of the money, John Cena and Roman Reigns against in, uh, Randy Orton. Uh, it was a full uh, tag team match, really. Uh, Kane, Kane and Randy Orton were dying the whole match. Uh, then John Cena comes back, and Roman Reigns. John Cena and Roman Reigns comes back and. They end up losing. They end up winning the match via DQ when Kane throws the steel steps at John Cena. 
And then she, then Kane gives John Cena the tombstone over in the middle of the ring. And uh, Triple H was posting, like, oh, he's hurt. We need to get punches out here. But like, at the time, Tron for somebody to go and help Cena. But instead, Seth Rollins and his jobber came out and attempted to cash in on John Cena. And it was really close, too. But then the uh, also unexpected happened. Dean Ambrose comes out and stops Rollins from cashing in his money in the bank briefcase on John Cena and chases him to the arena. And uh, uh, Roman Reigns had a little standoff. No, Roman Reigns actually speared Kane and had a little standoff with Triple H. And that was probably the end of the show. Triple H stepped off the apron, and uh, that was it. That's practically all that happened. So what do you think about it, uh, Zach? What do you think about it? I liked the stare down. I think all of us yeah. liked the stare down. I enjoyed the stare down. It was awesome. We all love the stare. Lo- we, we all know that match is happening. Roman, Triple H, and we know that that's going to either make or break Roman Reigns' career. Yeah. That's, that's going to be it. the deciding factor because Triple H being in the hierarchy of WWE, he can make that happen. He can make yeah. it happen to where... Roman does not see the main event for another four or five years. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, they're making it at Kane's expense. And I vocalized my multiple times on this channel how angry I am with the way Kane has been built over the last few weeks. Matter of fact, over the last few months. Yeah. Well, actually, over the past few years. Well, you you said years during Raw. I I've been saying months just because I've been, I've I've been sick and tired of the way they're treating him, especially after Extreme Rules. Because after that, he hasn't looked strong at all, at all. Like I said, four times, four weeks straight, he's been looked like Roman Reigns' bitch. Yeah. How is that supposed to make him look strong? What does that? Why does what makes that? What gives him a WWE World Championship match? Uh, that, that's a good question, dude. <laughs> Kane's been getting bitched out by your arch enemy. So what What makes you think that putting him in the match with John Cena and with the guy that his his bitch yeah. is going to make Kane look any better because Randy Orton's in the match? No, that's not going to make anything better. Randy, Randy Orton's or- wrestling with a Randy- concussion. Randy Orton is actually wrestling... Roman Reigns, so it's Roman Reigns. It's actually Roman Reigns' bitch, too. R- Randy Orton is wrestling with a Think concussion. About it. Off of what happened last night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I couldn't tell you how I liked the match at all because I didn't see a good portion of, of it. I just saw Kane kind of beat the hell out of Cena, and I I turned back on. Well, to be honest, you're gonna be surprised by this, even though I told you this earlier. I like. I give the, the show a solid I nine point five. I kind of like the show overall. I actually kind of nine point five. So it's almost a perfect show. Oh yeah, definitely. A lot of unexpected things happen tonight. Got guys, the likes of Chris Jericho, AJ Lee, The Miz, returning. Uh, Paige Hill turn, which we did not expect at all. Uh, Funky Dactyls potentially breaking up, uh, which nobody cares about, of course. But go on. The, the start, the start of the start of Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho, maybe, and uh, the possible Roman Reigns and Triple H match could happen soon. That's that's a pretty good show right there, dude. And, oh, and Jack Swagger face turn. You Jack get, Swagger face turn. That's actually that's actually a good show right there. I give that a solid nine point five, nine and a half. I'm going to say eight, and I think the only reason, only thing it was missing was a little bit of uh, some Brock Lesnar. But I understand uh, why Lesnar. I understand why they weren't going to bring him back so early. So it's yeah, they're going to bring him back. They're probably going to bring him back probably before Battleground or sometime after Battleground. I say I and, say the uh, night after Battleground to make yeah, him exactly. look strong. And, so, uh, oh, go ahead. WWE fans, everybody who's angry about John Cena losing last night or John Cena winning the title last night, don't worry because you know it's all gonna it's, end up being better because you know Brock Lesnar's gonna come back, you know Brock's gonna beat Cena's ass, and you know Brock's gonna win the title, so it's fine. Mm, uh, and as long as you can suffer, and... as long as you can suffer through another Super Cena reign, you guys will be golden for Brock Lesnar coming back. 
go on. There's actually a, there's actually a big problem there because I mean I would actually enjoy Brock Lesnar beating Cena, but I don't want to see a part timer have the titles. Because, yeah, we were talking we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, part timers. I just don't think they deserve titles at all. The Rock was gone for seven years and he just comes back and wins the title. That doesn't make any sense. Brock Lesnar leaves for like what four or five years and comes back. Decimating everybody, ending the Undertaker's undefeated streak at WrestleMania, um, and I just don't think a part timer deserves all that. I mean, okay. he, he 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 destroyed the likes of Triple H, Shawn Michaels, CM Punk, guys like that. I don't think he deserves any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, uh, I think that's gonna do it for our yeah. first Raw. Well, our first Raw review as kind of a team. This is my fifth. But uh, that's going to be your review for WWE Raw of June 30th, 2014. I want to thank all of you for watching. I want to thank my special guest here, the wrestling... Uh, what is it? Joni. Joni. Wrestling Joni. Joni. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, you guys can go follow me again at TWJENT as an entertainment at TWJENT on Twitter. And... Uh, if you guys go to follow me on uh, on YouTube, I will have my profile edited and set up by tomorrow. And I'm sure I'll have my first video and everything posted by tomorrow. So you guys have a lot to look forward to. You definitely don't want to miss that first video. <laughs> if you, if you know, if yeah, you like, if depending you like on what our you first heard tonight, that we had. What's up? Go ahead. Wait, well, I said depending on what we had to do on our first take, that was just awful. <laughs> our first take was just... That was just a disaster. Yeah, that was horrible, but we did better on the second one. You know, if if y'all liked what you hear, please feel free to give this video a like, add it to your favorites if you would enjoy. Also, uh, leave your comments and everything down below. What did you guys think about the show tonight? You know, leave everything down below. Go subscribe to the Wrestling Rot... I'm going to get it. <laughs> You're going to get it. You're going to get it. The Wrestling Jonin. Jonin. J-O-N-I-N. Jonin. Wrestling Joni, and this is his first, you know, video in what a year and a half, two years. Ah, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Probably less than a year. I mean, sometime less than probably five months, maybe. Yeah. So make make him feel welcome. Also, you can find his link and everything down in the description box below. Also, is where all of mine will be. And uh, I think more that's about. More I think that should do it. You have any final words? Well, I'm just gonna say there's more to come from me. There's more to come from you, as I as we all know. Uh, I really enjoyed being here with uh, Perry the Entertainer here, and I hope I can do a lot more with him. Um, um, and I enjoy having this review, and I hope you guys have a great day or whatever, and keep on being a wrestling fan. Happy 4th of July weekend, actually. I'm probably not going to see them very And that, too, yes. And that. I, that completely escaped my mind. Because <laughs> I'm probably not making a SmackDown review, so. No one, who watches SmackDown anymore? You know, jokes. <laughs> Kids, children. Well, okay. I'm sorry, kids. You're not jokes. Okay. <laughs> you accepted the apology for them? <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, they can't because they really can't talk. But. <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for us. I'm Perry the Entertainer. Uh, That's the wrestling non-Jew. Wrestling Joni. Joni, damn it. The wrestling Joni. We're all signing off here. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you guys. Uh, happy 4th of July, and until next time.